Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon one and all. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We praise the Almighty, we send blessings and salutations upon all those who were sent from the beginning all the way to us to guide us, to remove us from the darkness to the light. His Highness uh, Sheikh Saeed ibn Tahnoon, the dignitaries who are here, the leaders of all the faiths, my brothers, my sisters of all faiths and all denominations who are here this evening. It is really an honor to be speaking about the interfaith happiness and I think it's important for us to understand that our entire life is a search for happiness within this world and the next. And in that, we would only be able to cover one or two aspects every time we spoke about happiness. So this evening, I have chosen to speak about one aspect of happiness because it is relevant to every one of us. I see my brothers and sisters of so many different faiths and I'm really happy because it gives us a great opportunity to extend the hand of warmth and the hand of humanity over and above everything else. And I want to cite for you a few of the quotations from the Quran as well as from the teachings of the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Starting with something so beautiful where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has taught us something amazing. He says, خَيْرُ nas أَنْفَعُهُمْ nas," Which means the best of people are those who are actually the most beneficial to the rest of the people. Amazing. If you want to know how good you are, you need to know how much you have benefited others. If you have not benefited others, you do not stand a chance of being from among those who are the best. So if I want to be the best, I need to start doing something about it. I need to make sure that I benefit others as much as I can. Notice the term used is not Muslimin, it is Anas, the people, those who are benefiting the rest of the people the most. And we go back to ask why. The reason is we all believe we come from one root. In fact, even the atheist who does not have a faith believes in his own way that the root is all one, right? In his own way. We who believe that we come from Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve, may peace be upon them. We also believe that the root is one. Perhaps we believe differently, but either one of us believes that there is a root. That would make us all part of one huge family. Because at the beginning, we were all together. And I think where we have gone wrong is when we have forgotten that. Because the moment you forget that you're part of one family, you, you tend to notice or feel a distance that is not actually there, but it's created because of numbers. You know, you have your brother, you are from one mother, one father, then you have uh, a son and your brothers have children and your sisters have children and their children's children, they become second cousins, third cousins. Before you know it, it's too far, subhanAllah. But if you are really a true human being who wants to understand why the Almighty has made you, you need to go back to the root to always say, I differ with this guy, but guess what? He's my brother. I differ with this sister, but she is my sister in humanity to begin with. And this is where we will come to this narration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that speaks about the best from amongst you, those who don't forget that you're all one, so you need to be the best to each other. Anfa means the one who benefits the other the most. And now I want to mention a beautiful narration that I will cap with because I don't want to actually take up too much time, but I think it's very, very powerful for me. You know, there is a narration that states that there was a man in the desert. And in the desert, it was a hot day, he was very thirsty, so he found a well. And when he went into the well, he actually had to climb down because there was no bucket. He drank as much as he could and he came up. And this narration is not even argued. It means it's absolutely authentic. He came up and as he's walking away from the well, he was full. He was full. He quenched his thirst. He noticed something. What did he notice? A dog. فَإِذَا كَلْبٌ يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَى مِنَ الْعَطَشِ أَوْ يَلْهَدْ يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَى مِنَ الْعَطَشِ In the Arabic language, it means that he suddenly saw this dog that was so thirsty, it was panting and literally sniffing into the sand because of the thirst. 
And imagine the person, the man who looked at it, he thought to himself, you know what? This dog is as thirsty as I was before I went into the well. Let me go into the well and get some water for it because there's no bucket here. I need to go in again. For who? Not for who? For what? For a dog. So he decided to go down again and he had nothing to take the water back up to the dog. So guess what he did? He took his shoe. Imagine, look at your shoe, my shoe. You know, I have clocks, by the way. I don't think I want them to get wet, you know. So he had this leather sock of his, a khuf, known as a khuf, the type of shoe they used to wear. He took it off, he filled it with water, imagine, to, to come back, not a human being, but a dog. And he quenched the thirst of a dog. You and I know if there was a dog around, I think we would actually walk the other direction, right? In a lot of cases, right? So he actually made the effort. He took it, he brought the dog back to closer to him. He made the dog drink and the Almighty was watching. The Almighty was watching. The Almighty says, I love this deed of compassion so much that I have forgiven this man for him is paradise. Wow. This is the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want to raise for you something amazing. Why was there a dog and not anything else? Have you ever asked yourself that question? From amongst you, the Muslims would know probably this narration, but I'm going to take it from a different angle. Why a dog? Because if there was anything besides a dog, perhaps the intention of that man could have been questioned. Because there is a dog, the intention is not questioned. Nobody's ever questioned the, the intention. It was compassion for the sake of the Almighty. Imagine if there was a beautiful peacock. You know, you see the bird. Wow. And you come up. Ew, lovely bird. Let me come up with water for this bird. Intention is messed. Imagine you saw a lovely woman. Wow. Ooh, let me impress her by getting water for her. And I'll get her both of my leather socks and tell her, here is your water. But the Almighty know, knew that if there is a dog, the man's intention is absolutely clean and superb. I want to ask you, my brothers and, question, my brothers and sisters, a question. And that is, if this man achieved paradise and forgiveness by showing compassion to a dog, what do you think? One would achieve if he were to show compassion towards a human being who differs from you. Subhanallah. A human being. You have someone belonging to a different faith, someone belonging to uh, whatever they do, someone thinking in a totally different way. Trust me, they are not just humans. They are part of your broader family. To reach out to them, not just with water, but with anything else. And this is why... The Quran says, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever saves a single life is equivalent to the one who has saved entire humanity. The term Muslim is not mentioned. The term, in fact, the term used is a nafs. Someone who has saved a life, that which is living, because you have contributed towards preserving and protecting humanity. So that was the message that I have for myself and yourselves, a reminder to say we all come from one root. The fact that we differ in faith and inclination, etc., should never lead us to utter hurtful, hateful words because the beginning of violence is a hurtful word, a hateful word. It downgrades and it becomes such that people start attacking each other. So I would like to protect myself from words that are filled with hurt and hate so that I can preserve the goodness of the Almighty. At the end of the day, remember, your life and mine is approximately 70 years. Perhaps a little bit more in some cases and a little bit less in some. Why do I need to take that life away before that? May the Almighty grant us a deep understanding. May we learn to respect one another. Like I said, if we have another opportunity, perhaps sometime we may discuss another aspect of the care that we should be having for one another in order to achieve happiness. Without caring for one another, we will not be able to taste the sweetness of the happiness that we are searching for from the beginning and we are looking for it. I pray that the Almighty grant it to us, not just today, 
but every day and not just for ourselves but may he allow us to light the candles of the rest so that we can all live in peace and we can see the growth of our generations in a happy way <laughs>